Batman Forever is super influential. It actually got me basically watching movies again, and because I'm watching movies now, I'm reviewing them. Hey, what's up guys, this is Josh here. Today I wanna to do a little movie review on Batman Forever from 1995. Now, I probably have the most personal backstory with this specific Batman. Um, I remember coming to visit my grandma and my aunt used to live with my grandma. Every single time I'd come to visit, I'd wanna put it on. I just love this movie so much that she ended up giving it to me. I'm kind of reviewing movies now partially because of this movie, so let me explain. I hadn't watched anything all the way up until, I wanna say summer 2019. For some reason, I wanted to see this movie again. If you go on IMDb, it has like a 5.2 rating. When I first watched this in 2019, that's what kicked off me watching movies again. From there, I watched all the Batmans, and then I slowly got pulled into like the current superhero movies of the time, basically snowballed into watching all the movies that I'm watching now. Batman Batman Forever is super influential. It actually got me watching movies again, and because I'm watching movies now, I'm reviewing them. So real quick before I jump into the pros and the cons, there is an extended cut that nobody has seen of this movie. The original cut is two hours, and I think it's called the Schumacher cut, and I think his is like a 170 minute cut, which I think is 40 extra minutes. Because scenes were taken out, there was a lot more cons, a lot more problems with the story, things like that, so I might reference that. And I would absolutely kill to see the Schumacher cut of this movie because I love it pretty much unlike anybody else. Let's jump into the pros of Batman Forever. And the pros is, personally, I like the villain styles in the Schumacher movies better than any of the other villains. People say it's more cartoony and it definitely is more colorful, but I don't really feel like they're less threatening. Like when you see Two-Face in this movie, when you see the Riddler in this movie, there's really nothing wild watered down about them. They're very aggressive. Even Two-Face will just get angry at Batman, try to shoot him, end up shooting one of his own guys, and he doesn't care. You know what I mean? They're savages. So I really liked the villain style here, and I didn't really feel like it was so cartoony that it took you out of it. People, that's what people say about these movies is that they're a little bit too flashy and cartoony and not as believable, but I mean, Batman's a comic book. I liked this blend because it was very flashy and cool, but it also was serious at the same time. I love almost everything about the Riddler here. I wouldn't say he's my favorite Batman villain of all time because people say that it's basically Ace Ventura acting like the Riddler, and I could kind of see that, but it's just Jim Carrey at a 10 out of 10 being the Riddler to me. I absolutely love it. Riddle me this, riddle me that. His whole progression in this movie is great. Again, there was probably lots more details in the Schumacher cut that we missed, but you know, when he's just working for Bruce Wayne and then when he's slowly uncovering things, he slowly first becomes the Riddler until his final stage of the Riddler. I love that whole progression. And his villainous plot also is like one of my favorites in any Batman series. So he basically is trying to create this thing to where if you watch TV, it'll show 3D things in your own brain. So he wants to like shoot something into your brain that allows you to see things in 3D. So it's like a better version of TV. But when he does that, he accidentally finds out that he can like suck the brain power out of people. So that's what he starts doing. He starts putting these machines in front of people's TVs. Everybody's watching the TV. They get the 3D experience, but then he's also like stealing their brain power. And then later on, he finds a way to basically map somebody's mind. So if you go into his machine, he can read everything about your mind. So basically if he were to get Bruce Wayne to go into the machine, machine, he could read his mind and he would know that he's Batman. I just think it's one of the best villainous plots that I've seen anywhere in Batman. If they had this 170 minute cut, it would have been way more in depth, but you see just enough here and I still really like it. If you look at the new Batman from 2022, the Riddler has these notes that he gives to Batman and they're just very bare bones. The whole movie is bare bones, the new Batman, which I kind of like it and I kind of don't, but I love the riddle boxes here. I just like the complexity. I prefer these to the 2022 version. I think Two-Face's attention to detail is a pretty impressive. Like he always has the very intricate outfit cut in half. He always refers to himself as like we and us because he has like two different personalities. He'll have like two drinks, like one drink over here, one drink over here. He'll have like two different cigarettes. So if you look at Two-Face, there's so much attention to detail to his character. And even there's one point where he has like a, a girl dressed as an angel and a girl dressed as like a demon. 
And this one girl gives him like a bunch of angel food and the one demon girl gives him a bunch of like demon food or evil food. And while they're describing what they brought for him, he walks with his white side or his dark side. There's just so much attention to detail with Two-Face that I love. I loved his character. I think he's aggressive. I liked Robin's story here. Again, very underdeveloped, but it's a great introduction to bringing him in. I think that's one of the more memorable scenes is when his whole family dies trying to defuse the bomb that Two-Face has. So... Um, I do think it was a very good way to introduce Robin. I wish we had more time with everything and breathing with everything, but I really did like how they brought Robin in here and that scene was pretty intense to me. I really liked Val Kilmer and Nicole Kidman. I could see people saying Val Kilmer is a little bit vanilla, but if you go back to the original script, the whole point of Batman Forever was that Bruce Wayne is a little bit lost and by the end he kind of rediscovers himself and he's Batman Forever. So he is supposed to be like not fully in the zone in this movie to the very end, but I really like both their chemistry. I like both them as actor and actress. I've seen them do much more extreme better roles, but this role didn't really require them to do anything extra. I really like them. And then the last thing I really liked about this movie was the soundtrack. I just really, really like the soundtrack here. It's not every single time I hear any noise in this movie or any music, it's good, but the soundtrack, I really, really, really like it here. It's very catchy, it's very memorable. It always gets me to fill things, or most of the time it does. Let's jump into the cons I have this movie. And the cons, right off the bat, it has some pretty bad CGI. Now, they don't really use it too often, but it's used a little bit in the opening scene. And when they first introduce the Riddler, they have this kind of like far zoomed out camera scene basically coming up to like the window where the Riddler's at. But the whole thing is CGI, it looks completely fake. But CGI here isn't that good but it's also not used very much, so I don't really have too much of an issue with it. I just wish it wasn't so much right in the beginning because there's very little of it later on. Another con is the underdeveloped script. I mean, literally nothing has time to breathe. You don't have really much time to breathe with Val Kilmer and Nicole Kidman. You don't really have too much time to breathe with Robin because Robin's pretty much distraught. He moves into the Wayne Manor and there needs to be this kind of like slow progression to him turning to Robin, but it's kind of just like he's there, he's upset, and then all of a sudden he opens the door, he knows what's in the Batcave, and he becomes kind of Robin from there. The one that I wanted to see the most development on was the Riddler. Uh, I think there was a lot more time of him becoming the Riddler, discovering himself, and just his whole progression. I loved his progression from beginning to end, and I would just love to see more parts of that. <laughs> And then also the main point of the movie is Bruce will have these visions where he kind of feels lost. He'll remember something and he'll be like, oh, there's like a black book. And he always gets to the black book. You know about this black book, but he never really opens it or figures it out. So in the original cut of this movie, the Riddler and Two-Face end up finding out where he lives. They take over the Batcave and he pretty much has amnesia from that point. And in the cut that we have now, he just basically gets knocked out and wakes back up and just goes back to work. But in the original cut of the movie, he gets knocked out. He has this kind of amnesia. Basically, he finds this black book and it reveals that he's not responsible for his parents' death because he was feeling guilty. And then there was supposed to be this really big bat that Val Kilmer was supposed to stand next to. And it basically, he's facing the bat. He's becoming Batman forever. So there's this whole subplot of him looking at this book that goes nowhere. And it's like, if you're gonna cut out the, the final scene with the book that makes everything make sense, like why keep those little dream sequences it makes it kind of like an incomplete movie, you know? They were supposed to start off this movie with Two-Face escaping from Arkham Asylum, but I think they didn't do that because it was too dark or I have no idea. So the movie just starts with you seeing Batman. And if you've watched any of the other Batman movies, everything starts with the villain first. I mean, you look at the one with Bane in it. Bane takes over the plane in the beginning. First thing you see, the one with Joker in it, Heath Ledger. First thing you see is them at the bank. So it's really nice to establish the villain first and then see Batman, but this movie was all cut into pieces so much that you see Batman first, you don't even see Two-Face escaping. So 
I understand everybody's hate with this movie. I really like it. I really enjoy it. I really wish they didn't cut it so bad, you know, down to only two hours. Like this movie needed to at least be like two hours and 20 minutes. I totally understand everyone's hate with this movie. I still have a lot of fun with it. If I had to rate it, I would rate it probably like a 7.5 out of 10. And by try or pass, for me, it's a solid buy. I love this movie. But for you guys, I would say it's a solid try. Like. I used to see people watching this and like hating it and like not liking it and say it's like, oh, I can't believe you'd ever recommend this to me. But to be honest, I really like it. It's one of my favorite Batmans still to this day. Let me know what you think of Batman Forever. Let me know what your favorite Batman is. We're on the road to 50,000 subscribers and I couldn't do it without any of you guys' help. You guys are the best. Having a great day out here. Hopefully having a great day at home. See you all in the next video. Peace.